Stradivarius and Guinarius embraced the belief that everything in a master violin helps make it a work of art, and that no detail is ever too small, because only when a musician falls madly in love with the sound and the beauty of their instrument will their music ever have a chance of becoming magical. Hide glue is made from the skin or the hide of cows, and after it's cooked, dried, and ground into flakes, if kept away from moisture, it can be stored indefinitely. To make a fresh batch of hide glue, the granules are accurately weighed and mixed with about three and a half times their weight in water. The mixture is swirled for the first few minutes to help reveal and then remove any impurities. After the granules finish swelling, heat is applied and voila! the finest glue, and the only glue that should ever be used on a fine violin. Yet the secret of the hide glue goes beyond its ability to last thousands of years and to add the finishing touches to the tone of a Stradivarius or Guinarius. It, like so many seemingly unimportant items, played a very important part in creating Stradivarius and Guinarius visual masterpieces. Yes, age and wear can add charm to an otherwise plain violin, yet what goes in and on the wood before the varnish is so much more important, and the real secret of the hide glue is color, knowing when to use it and when not to. While some claim that Stradivarius and Guinarius were mere craftsmen, the great connoisseurs, including Jacques Francais, have compared Stradivarius to Leonardo da Vinci and Guinarius to Vincent van Gogh. And once these artistic comparisons are recognized, the true art in master violins becomes much more clear. The Mona Lisa isn't just a woman with a subtle smile and a creative backdrop. And Stradivari's violins aren't just higher quality musical instruments with magical varnish. Both masters discovered dozens of artistic secrets that helped set them apart and defined their creations as masterpieces. One of the least noticeable of these secrets at first Yet one of the most obvious, once it's pointed out, is that the edges of the Mona Lisa and the edges within the boundaries of the purfling of Stradivari's violins are purposely darkened to help accentuate the colors and bring them to life. Yes, age and wear can add to the contrast, yet there will always be an added artistic quality if the shading is in the instrument from the very beginning, under the varnish. Guinarius later took this secret of Stradivarius and added so much texture and contrast to the edges of his instruments that authorities began to debate whether it was due to artistic genius or insanity. Yet, like the colorful masterpieces of Van Gogh, Guinari's violins are beyond compare artistically, because regardless of how unique his style or original his colors and outlines became, he religiously followed the rules set down by Stradivarius, including the secrets of the glue.
If the belly is glued together using color, it leaves a dark line down the center, which isn't just in poor taste, it makes the joint appear defective. Yet, if the maple is glued together without using color, it leaves a light line, which is artistically just as bad. On the other hand, if the three strips of purfling are glued together using color, the lighter wood in the center will appear muddy. Yet, when all three pieces are glued in place, colored glue must be used, or there will be a light line on either side, which, though sometimes barely visible, appears odd, even to the untrained eye, and detracts from the shading around the edges. If the label is glued in place using color, the edges of the paper will become unnaturally dark and the center unevenly stained. Yet everywhere else, a fine violin needs color in the glue to help frame the picture and accentuate the fabulous colors of the varnish.